here and uh, God has been good. We've been in quarantine and separate physically from one another as a church, but we've been connected through live streaming and the internet and it's so good to get the different messages from you and uh, it's great to be able to share the Word of God with you every single day and I do this just to encourage you just to let you know that you're not alone, that you're being prayed for, that um, though we're out of the sight of each other, uh, we're not out of each other's minds and hearts. And God is with us every step of the way. My prayer that you'll sense his wonderful presence today as I share a couple truths with you. I just want to encourage you again to... Um, walk in such a way that there's social distancing and you want to continue to use over-the-top hygiene and washing your hands and after you touch different things whether it's groceries or handles of doorknobs uh, uh, computers make sure you you wash your hands and and wipe down if you and someone else is using something you're using, wipe it down so that whatever germs we have or someone else has, uh, we won't be picking up or uh, passing on to anybody. I believe that uh, the, I guess the curve of this virus is starting to level out, but we want to continue to live lives that are uh, promoting uh, safety and and so continue to to walk in this time of quarantine in a safe way okay I love you guys and think about you often and so let's say a prayer ask God's blessing upon uh, this time you know I come on at 2 15 every day Monday through uh, Friday, and I am happy to be here with you. It blesses my life as well as I dig into God's Word uh, with you. So let's say a prayer. Lord, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for this time that we can be together. It's You're such a good God, and you're worthy of all praise. And Lord, we need you every single day, every moment of every day. And Lord, we realize that we've been running so fast and we've not had enough time to spend with you and with our family. And now we have that kind of time. And though it might be difficult and that there's not a large income coming into the household for many people, Lord, you are providing and you will continue to provide. So give us your wonderful peace and help us, Lord, to take the good from these moments that we're experiencing and help us to have these ex great experiences that we might not have had unless we were in this quarantine. And Lord, take them into our new life after the quarantine's all over. So bless each one. Have your hands upon them. And open our minds to your word. Speak to us from the intended meaning of your scriptures this afternoon, we ask. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So what I want to do is I, I want to do something a little bit different than what I've been doing with the devotions. Um, I, I want to work through uh, biblical steps, and it's the biblical steps of recovery, and this is the Recovery Bible. And if you're not in recovery and you're not addicted, don't worry. This is going to speak to your life, and the truth is it's the Word of God. And we're going to walk through some of the steps. And I've got a workbook as well and very good questions in here. So um, if you have a, even a pencil and paper, uh, I'm going to, you know, have a few questions that you can write down. You can write down these questions and uh, maybe I'll even uh, type them up uh, so that you can get them. You could also pick this up from a uh, Christian book distributor. It's in Peabody and you can order that and they'll mail it out to you. Um, but it's the Recovery Bible and Recovery Workbook, 
and I just want us to, to, to work through this because I think it really is applicable to everybody, every Christian. I think the steps that are used, the 12 steps, the devotional, um, is, is extremely helpful. I'm a big believer in AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. I'm a big believer in NA, Narcotics Anonymous. And, uh, and, and these steps follow that, but give biblical perspective. And it's, all, it's actually the AA and the NA grew out of the Bible. Uh, but, we, uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you into the scriptures of where you can find these different steps, okay? And, and really, the first step, when you, when, the first step of, of recovery is, is this here. It's, it's this. We admit that we were powerless over our problem and that our lives have become manageable. Powerless over our problem. And there are circumstances within our lives that we're absolutely powerless over and and that might be a uh, it might be in a relationship with uh, supervisors or spouse uh, might be in relationship with um, uh, a a person within the uh, community and and uh, and you're powerless you're powerless over your situation because you you work at a certain job you have a certain person that might be over you. And uh, you might be powerless, you're powerless over where you were born. You're powerless over the parents that you had. You're, you, you're powerless over when you're, when you're younger, the neighborhood that you live in. You're powerless over the school that you go to. Uh, you're powerless over the, uh, uh, your, your body. Uh, um, you're, you're, you're powerless over um, the nationality you've come from. You're powerless over the color of your, your skin. There are things that we're, we're powerless over. We're powerless over um, the country even that we were been born into. We're powerless over that. And, 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 so, and so there are things that we're powerless over. There's these no-win situations. And that's what we want to focus in on today is that the no-win situation uh, how does it affect us and and as a result of it how does it impact our life and the habits that we have and I want to read a story a a woman that was powerless over her circumstance and and her situation she um, is a a servant in the house of Abraham and Sarah and uh, and God had called Sarah and Abraham and said, "You're going to be the father, um, Abraham. You're going to be the father of a great nation." They didn't even have a child, and he was 75 years old when he got that calling, and and Sarah was was 65 years old. And they didn't have any children, and 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 they wanted to have children. They 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 wanted to uh, have uh, be uh, have a family, let alone have be the parents of a great nation. And, and so it didn't happen. After God had made the promise for uh, 15 years later, you know, or 10 years later, Abraham was, was now um, 85 and, and Sarah was, was, uh, was 75 uh, years old or so. And, and it tells us in the scripture, and, and they had a, a, a servant woman, her name, Hagar. And, and this is what it says. It says, now Sarai, and that's Sarah. Her name was changed later to Sarah, but Sarai, Abram's wife, had had not been able to bear children for him. But she had an Egyptian servant named Hagar. So Sarai said to Abraham, the Lord has prevented me from having children. Now remember, it's the Lord that promised the child when she was 65 and he was 75. She was beyond having children. And, and she says, the Lord has prevented this. So so go and sleep with my servant. Perhaps I can have children through her. And Abraham, Abram agreed with Sarai's proposal. So Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, the Egyptian servant, and gave her to Abram as a wife. And this happened 10 years after Abraham had settled in the land of Canaan. So Abraham had sexual relations with Hagar, and she became pregnant. But when Hagar knew she was pregnant, she began to treat her mistress, which is Sarai, with contempt. 
And then Sarai said to Abraham, this is all your fault. I put my servant into your arms, but now that she's pregnant, she treats me with content. The Lord will show who's wrong, who's wrong, you or me. And Abraham replied, look, she's your servant, so deal with her as you see fit. Then Sarai treated Hagar harshly that she finally ran away. So Hagar is in a no-win situation. She's in a circumstance that she did not put herself in. And, and so she becomes pregnant with the child of Abram, and, 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 and that's what Sarai wanted because she's like, that child will be the heir. Because Sarai and Abraham didn't trust God for the promise. And then in verse 7 it says, and so, so Hagar runs away after being treated so harshly and terribly and, 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 and tormented by, by Sarai. And it says in verse 7, And the angel of the Lord found Hagar beside a spring of water in the wilderness along the road of Shur. And the angel said to her, Hagar, Sarai's servant, where have you come from and where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress, Sarai, she replied. And the angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress, submit to her authority. And then he added, I will give you more descendants than you can count. And the angel also said, said you are now pregnant and will give birth to a son, and you are to name him Ishmael, which means God hears. For the Lord has heard your cry of distress. The Lord has heard your cry of distress she's in this miserable situation wouldn't wish it on anybody she cry, she she runs out and god meets her and the angel says to her the lord has heard your cry and then it goes on to say this son of yours will be a wild man as untamed as a wild donkey and he will raise his fist against everyone and everyone will be against him yes he will live in an open hostility against all the relatives therefore thereafter hagar used another name to refer to the lord who had spoken to her and she said you are the god who sees me she also said have i truly seen the one who sees me so that well was named beer lalhairoi which means well of the living one who sees me. It can still be found between Kadesh and Berid. So Hagar gave Abraham a son, and Abraham named him Ishmael. Abraham was 86 years old when Ishmael was born. Again, we look at this situation. It's a no-win situation. She didn't ask to be into this situation. It was placed upon her. And, and, and so she ran from the situation. And it was there that, that she met the angel of the Lord. And the angel told her, for the Lord has heard, in verse 11, the Lord has heard your cry of distress. The Lord has heard your cry. And, and, and so I, I want to read just in this, this little devotional just a couple paragraphs, and that's this. When we are caught in no-win situation, situations it's tempting to run away through our addictive, compulsiveness and escape the hatches. And at times like these, God is there and he sees, listening to our woes. And we need to learn to express our pain to God instead of just trying to escape it. He hears our cr cries and is willing to give us hope for the future. What is your situation that is a no-win situation? What is your situation where you didn't ask to be in this situation? It happened because of the world that you were born into and because of the circumstances of living in this fallen world. I think of people that might be out there that have lost loved ones. I think of 
women who have lost their husbands and died. You didn't ask to be in that situation. I think of I think of men who've lost their wives. And they're, you're you're you feel alone. You didn't ask to be in that situation. I think of a a, a child, maybe even a teenager that has has come through some kind of abusive household relationship maybe some the family they're they're addicted and to drugs and you didn't ask to be in that situation and and then that fuels we respond in a certain way we run away we try to escape the feelings processing it the quarantine that we're under we didn't ask to be in this situation this could really drive addictive behavior we try to escape it. We try to forget about it. We try, no, I, we didn't ask to be in this situation, but how are we trying to escape? And I want to ask some questions for this step. One is this, what feelings do I experience as I acknowledge people in my life who have power? People that have power over me, such as a supervisor, a spouse, a sponsor, maybe, if you're in, maybe a teacher. How do, what feelings do I experience? Write them down. Another question is, what do I try to escape from? What do I feel trapped by? Right now, what drives, what drives that, that feeling of, I have no control over it. What is it, you know, and, 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 and what, what is it that I'm trying to escape from? Am I running away? I know that as we've stopped and we have to stay home and we can't socialize like we've socialized and go to the different places that we've gone to in the past so that we can go seemingly have fun now we have to sit home and we start to think, we start to look inward. What is it inside? What, what do I try? What am I facing now that normally I don't have a chance to even think about because I'm so busy? And what, are, what is it I'm trying to escape from? What do I feel trapped by? And then, and then a third question is this. How do I escape my feelings? How do I escape them? Such as anger, such as boredom, such as fatigue, such as loneliness. How do I escape them? What am I using to escape those feelings with? I mean, it could even be something that uh, could be healthy. You might be a person that likes to go to the gym or likes to ride the bike. I know myself, I, I, I like to go and go on a, a treadmill or go on an elliptic trainer. I love the bike ride. I used to love the run before my hip and things started to hurt so bad. I, I like to do some simple running in place. And, but, but, and, and, and I would say that there are times when I've used that as a, an, a, an escape from my feelings. But it's been productive. And maybe even it's been a time of processing. But there are unhealthy things that I use as well. If I don't go do that, guess what? I might want to go get ice cream. And I'm not like maybe you. You can eat one small ice cream cone and that's it. You're done. But I can tell you myself, you know, when I've got things on my mind, I'm, I'm processing things at times and, and my emotions, maybe it's even anger. You know, you, you just, yeah, I'm going to eat. Or I've got a lot of work to do because I teach at college as well, pastoring a church here too. And, 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 and instead of going and doing the work, getting that work done, getting those papers graded or making that video for the students and, and writing up a, some kind of worksheet to help them be able to learn something, instead of going right to that, what do I do? I'm going to run to the you know, refrigerator here in the church. I'm going to use the fry later and fry up something, whatever. What is it? What do you use to escape those feelings with? How do you escape? How do you run away? And this, this is, it's what's driving the addictive behavior. Another question is this. When things do not go my way or when I am in a no-win situation, what's my reaction with relationships, with work, promotions, kids who question or a rebel? 
traffic, drivers in front of me, people talking on a cell phone in public place, places, financial difficulties, people who hurt to or disappoint me, or, or God who seems to be silent, right? When things do not go my way or when I'm on a no-win situation, what is my reaction? How do I react? Write it down. Start making a journal. If I could, how would I change my response? How would I change it? And how would changing it be healthier than the way that I am responding now? And I can tell you from the scriptures that we just read here in Genesis chapter 16, 1 through 15, I can tell you that this, she didn't, she wasn't crying out to God, Hagar. She was running away. She was running, right? The, and it says this, it says, and, and so it says in verse 7, And the angel of the Lord found Hagar beside a spring of water in the wilderness along the road to Shur. She wasn't, she really wasn't seeking, or it doesn't tell us she was. But, but I'm going to say this, instead of escaping through something that is destructive, in trying to medicate ourselves, instead of escaping the feelings and the emotion and maybe even the responsibility that's going to still be there when it's, we're all done with our addictive behavior, bring it to the Lord. Bring it to the Lord. Bring your situation. Bring your uncontrolled by you circumstance bring the no win circumstance to the Lord and seek him call upon him pray about it before you go and do or practice the habit that would somehow temporarily help you escape. Bring it to the Lord in prayer. God met Hagar right there. And he affirmed her worth. And she was able to see that she had a future and there was a plan. And for ourselves, in our known no-win situation, let's write down what is that no-win situation, and what are our feelings, and what is the behavior that we're using to escape the no-win situation that really doesn't lead us out of it. All it does is help us maybe forget about it temporarily, but it's still there. Bring it to the Lord. Step one. Just recognize that your situation is out of your control. That's step one. And today we're going to just bring it to the Lord. Lord, thank you for being with us right now in the midst of maybe a no-win situation. We didn't ask to be here. If we were the one that was directing history, we would not have chosen this direction. But regardless, we're here. It rains on the just and the unjust. We all go through different storms in our lives because that's the weather here in our world until we get to heaven. And Lord, we pray that you would be with us and that you would help us look inwardly, really asking these questions. 
What are the feelings that we have? What do we do when we're in these unwanted circumstances? What is the way that we try to escape? God, help us to look inward. And then, Lord, help us also to change, to change the way we react. If I swing at a golf ball and I can't hit the golf ball very well, pounding my club on the tee or throwing my club into the woods is not going to change that I can't hit a golf ball. I need to go to a driving range and practice. So God, help us know what we need to do. Help us, Lord, to, to take steps to change and respond in ways that are productive and that are going to maybe not change the circumstance, but our attitude and perspective in the circumstance. Thank you, Lord. May you m come and meet us just like you meant Hagar. Meet us right where we're at. And God, give us divine direction. Thank you that you do hear us, that you do have a plan for our lives in our circumstances just like you did for Hagar. And we can trust you, the creator and maker of heaven and earth. And Lord, we thank you that, Lord, you, didn't just, you don't just speak to some people today. We all have access to you to go boldly before your throne because of your death and resurrection and because you rip the veil in two of the holy of holies. So all of us, everyone, who accepts you because of your blood that was shed for our sin can go into the presence of a holy God and experience the power and the majesty and be able to talk and listen to our God. Thank you, Lord. Father, we pray your hands upon every individual that's out there today that you would continue to keep them safe. God, we pray that you'll watch over all of our police and all of our fire people and all of our M M e EMTs and all of the different doctors and nurses and staff and people that are taking care of people. We pray for our counselors, Lord God. We pray for child and family and crisis centers. God, watch over them. We thank you for all that are working in these necessary businesses, Lord, that are open now that we'll, so we have water, so we have electricity, so that we have gas. God, thank you. Those that are in different stores and different places, God, thank you. We pray your protection upon them in the name of Jesus. And Father, we pray for all of our businesses, our small businesses, God, that they would get the loans and the grants that are needed. We pray, Lord, that you would provide in every way in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that they would continue to be able to survive. Lord, we thank you for the many different food banks, the Salvation Army, Lord, the United Way. Thank you for the many people, part of our fellowship, that have given gift cards for Stop and Shop and Market Basket and Price Right and um, Shaw's. Lord, thank you, Lord, that, that we're able to help people out and continue, Lord, to help us to help others. Lord, we pray for those that are the most vulnerable, those that have uh, different types of um, pre-existing physical conditions. And God, we pray your protection that they would not get the virus. We pray, Lord, for those that are older, Lord God, that they would not get the virus, that, Lord, you would continue to use all of us and help all of us, Lord, to keep it safe for everybody. We especially pray, Lord, for those families that have already been struggling 
financially, Lord, and that you'll meet them, Lord, that, Lord, people will find hope in you. We ask your hands, Lord, upon all of our many different pastors and different uh, Christian organizations, Lord, that are sharing the word and live streaming. God, may you give us all your strength and peace. Help us to be the best we can be. And Lord, we pray that the word would ring out like never before in our country and around the world. We pray, Lord, that this virus would be eradicated and that, Lord, that there would be a vaccine, that there would be a, a uh, different medicines that they're using now to, to uh, be able to, to eradicate it from people's bodies, God. May there be many more recoveries, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for those that have recovered and comfort those that have lost loved ones. Those that have people that are shut in right now, they can't even visit, watch over them, Lord. In the name of Jesus, have your hands, Lord, on Jane's mom, we pray. And we pray for Mrs. Gaucher. If it's her time, Lord, we pray, Lord, you would wonderful presence would be there. But give Jane and the family peace in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for the Ortega family, God. Have your hands, Lord, upon this one family member that's had the, the virus, Lord, and is now heading to boss. We pray, Lord God, that it would be eradicated from his body and others, Lord, that we know have it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the many that have recovered. Even one of my good friends, Lord, recovered from it. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We glorify you. You're a good God. Be with us this day. And help though we are in a no-win, seemingly situation. Help us to know that you hear us and that instead of trying to escape with addictive behavior, love you guys. Hey, grab a uh, hold of uh, our YouTube channel and subscribe to that. Uh, we want as many subscribers as possible. We want to be able to use it mobile. And so just subscribe to that. And also uh, send me an email. If you didn't get my newsletter, it's cfc, um, New Bedford at gmail.com. And also go to our website, cfc818.org. Got many things there, links you can hit uh, that you can get different in informational things that'll that'll help support you as a resource okay hey we've got things for children too go to our cfc uh our christian fellowship center new bedford channel youtube and go to the cfc kids there's videos there there's also uh, printable activities and we want you guys to be able to interact with your children uh, and read the bible together so god bless you we love you Thanks for being faithful and continue to serve him. Pass this video on if you can. God bless.